Okay, so in this video, we're really going to look at kind of the the middle of the war. Uh, and if you think of the the war as 1775-1776 being the earliest, the beginning of the war, 1776 to 1778 is kind of the middle of the war. And uh, the most significant fighting, uh, or a lot of the most uh, significant battles, um, then also takes place in the middle states. And so... Uh, it's pretty interesting that uh, the kind of the middle of the war takes place in, uh, you know, some of the key battles anyway, take place in the middle states. So uh, so New York and New Jersey, as we said at the end of the last video, the, the British have evacuated the city of Boston and are going to be, are going to go to New York, New Jersey area. Uh, they're going to go to New York and because it is a loyalist stronghold. So if we've talked about a little bit how there are about a third of the colonists are strong patriots ready for war um, with the British. About a third um, are loyalists, in other words, loyal to the king and don't want war. And then about a third of them uh, don't really care one way or the other, although could be pushed one way or the other if things, uh, depending upon how things go. And so New York is definitely one of those places where there's a lot of loyalists, and so it'll be a good base of operations for um, the British, and it will be a good way to kind of divide the nation. Uh, if you can keep the New England area, which is where the, the biggest problems are for the British, if you can keep that separate from the rest of the New England colonies, or the rest of the middle colony, or middle states at some point, uh, you kind of transition from calling them colonies to states. Um, if you can keep them separate from New England and the southern colonies, well, then you may kind of stop the spread of this this war. Uh, some states may feel like they're not really uh, this isn't such a, a big thing for them. At least that, or at least colonies, at least until we get to the Declaration of Independence. So um, that's kind of what we just talked about. Uh, the Patriots are out. The thing about it is the, the Continental Army, the Patriots, the Continental Army is outnumbered and untrained. They are, despite the fact that they did well at Bunker Hill, they're not a well-trained army. They're not prepared to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the British Army. The British Army is much better trained um, and much larger. So even if they're not w always well-trained, they, they have the statistical advantage. They have... Um, they have officers that are well trained. They have um, lots of military um, experience just as a nation, and they've got lots of equipment and supplies. So the Americans throughout New York, there, there's a multiple battles and series of battles that are, they're just defeated time and time again, and they must retreat. Um, but Washington uh, is his goal at this point is simply to preserve his army, keep his army alive, not to be completely defeated. And wiped out and the war over and so he is preserving his army with retreat after retreat um, they go from New York to New Jersey and then on to Pennsylvania losing 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 all along the way um, and the so he's continuing that retreat morale is very low but the thing is he has a problem it is the, the end of the year or uh, very soon, the, many of his soldiers are going to have, their enlistments are up. When you sign up, you sign up for a certain period of time and their enlistments are about to be up. And there is no way to, to stop them from leaving when their enlistment time is up, when the, what they agreed to sign for is up. Now today there is, but back then there was no way to stop that. And so... Um, Washington needs a victory. He needs something to convince these soldiers to fight on. Um, and when you're just retreating and retreating and retreating, you start to think, well, what's the point? We're just losing. I didn't, I didn't sign up for this to lose. I signed up this to win, and we're not winning, so why would I sign up again? And so Washington has to come up with a plan, and he does. And it's, this, it's the Battle of Trenton. And what he decides is, okay, we're going to cross the Delaware River, and we're going to get across the Delaware River into Trenton, New Jersey, and we're going to surprise this Hessian force there. The Hessians are German mercenaries. 
Um, the British have not only got their own soldiers there, but they have paid these soldiers basically to fight on their side. And so that, that's who the Hessians are. And, uh, and so we were like, well, we'll surprise attack them the day after Christmas. And it's a big success. Now, it's often said that they were, you know, that the Brit that the Continental Army caught them off guard because they were all kind of hungover from uh, a day of, of, of celebrating Christmas. And, uh, and so they caught them, you know, hungover. And there, there's no evidence of that. Is actually, there's quite a bit of evidence that that's not the case. Um, but they just weren't expecting them. Um, wash, it, it was expected that... Uh, they didn't really think somebody could cross the river uh, in such a quick time, and so they were. They, it was. It was that they they did catch them, surprise them, but it wasn't because they were they were all hungover or anything like that. Uh, and so this is a really important victory for them, um, because after so many defeats, all of a sudden now, hey, there's this victory. Look, look, we can we attacked them. We we captured all these these soldiers. Um, and pe things are looking up, and Washington's not done. He's going to use this momentum to continue on with the surprises. Uh, this is kind of the most famous, one of the most famous uh, paintings in, in all of American history, and certainly uh, the one of the most fam uh, the most famous from uh, the Revolution. Uh, it's a little the, the the aspect is a little distorted here, so it's, it looks a little more elongated than it should. But uh, you know, clearly you see Washington here in the center um, and uh, there, there, well, actually uh, this is a, a really interesting painting because all these different people kind of represent different parts of Amer different Americans and and their role in the victory uh, and so we're not going to go into all that right now but it just it is a, it's a famous picture painting of Washington crossing the Delaware but you can even see in the background all these people crossing um, Clearly a heroic image. Washington likely is not standing on a boat as they cross the river like this, um, but it is certainly a heroic image of the great general. So what you can see here real quickly is that they the, here's the Delaware River. Here's the town of Trenton right on it. And you can see these arrows coming from here and then here. So they actually cross the river um, this from this direction over here and then surprise them and come around to surround the, the city or the, the town of Trenton. And you can see uh, Nathaniel Green here, Washington and his men here, General Mercer here, Sullivan here to kind of stop them from being able to retreat. And then, the, so the retreat is cut off because they can't cut, you know, they're not going to be able to cross this river um, because this river, uh, the, the bridge here is also that escape route has is, is been cut off. And so, um, they're going to either fight or they're going to surrender, and the Hessians end up surrendering. But, as I said before, Washington's not done. He's got the Battle of Princeton. Uh, so General Cornwallis rushes back. He's the British, the British general. He rushes back to recapture Trenton, and um, he thinks he's got Washington because Washington has left men behind to keep the campfires burning um, and to make noise, to make it seem like Washington's army is still there in Trenton, is holding Trenton. Um, but Washington has actually escaped to head off to Princeton to attack a smaller force there, but he doesn't want Cornwallis nearby. And so Cornwallis has gone to Trenton to attack Washington, but Washington's not there. And so he's actually attacking the, another British force at Princeton and once again, it's a surprise. They all think he's at Trenton. And so it's another victory. And so we've got these twin victories um, right here. And it really starts to turn the tide of the war in a sense, but mostly just because it's starting to give America hope. Bring some aid, some aid from France. It doesn't bring the full aid that, that they need. But uh, the, the French hear of some of these victories, and they start to say, okay, maybe the Americans can win. We'll send them some supplies, try to help them out a little bit. And the other big thing these do is it gets his, it saves Washington's Continental Army. They agree, okay, we will sign up again. We'll, we'll, we'll sign these um, contracts. And they end up signing not one-year contracts or even six-month contracts, but 
three-year contracts. And so he's got his he's kept his continental army together, which is probably the most important piece of this, these two battles. Okay, and here we get to the battles of Saratoga. And this is a series of battles, and these are vitally important. Um, the, these is you know, if you if you remember just a few battles, you know, you remember Lexington and Concord because they're the first beginning. You remember Bunker Hill because it's the first major battle. Um, and then you, you remember Saratoga because this is the turning point in the war. Um, the Americans are using guerrilla tactics in this um, battle, in this fighting, and they're going to defeat the British. Uh, they're going to slow down the, and defeat the British. Um, because the British are not um, prepared for the, the, the terrain that they're trying to march through. And, and so they're, they're marching basically through the, the wilderness of upstate New York and um, with a huge army with all these supplies and um, they just can't, they can't move quickly because it's through this wilderness. And the Americans are cutting trees down in their way. They're using sharpshooters to kill scouts and officers. They're not just shooting at anybody um, randomly. They're, they're, they're targeting scouts, Native American scouts and officers. Well, very quickly, uh, Native Americans realize, hey, forget this. And they, they're, some of them, they're, they're not going to stick around for this because they're being targeted. And the officers are being shot. And so that's causing chaos for um, the British Army. And so these hit and run tactics are really helpful in this particular type of scenario. Now that's not always the best scenario, but always the best tactic. But in this scenario, in this wilderness, hit and run tactics, guerrilla tactics are the best option for the Americans. Um, the British are trying to divide New England from the rest of the colonies. We talked about that already. Um, and so that's where this British army is going down to New York to help to do this. Um, but they're not successful. Um, the Americans trap the British and force a surrender. And one of the, the one of the keys to this victory, uh, it's not on here, but it is Benedict Arnold. He saves the day here. Um, he's a key American general at this point. He helps to save the day. This is the turning point in the war. Um, at, after this, things are going to look up for the Americans. Uh, we'll talk about why that is in just a second. Well, well, just now, right now, because it convinces the French to join with the Americans. Now, the French, after the hearing of this major, I mean, this is a major army that they've captured at Saratoga. And so um, this army has been, this British army has been captured. And um, the French think, well, maybe the Americans can win. If the Americans can capture, have this big a victory, maybe they can win. And especially if we join with them and help. And so it's the, the Battle of Saratoga or the Battles of Saratoga are the turning point because the French join with the Americans. And they're going to supply 100,000 muskets and other supplies. And perhaps the most important is going to be the naval support that comes from France. <laughs> 